Imagine you wake up one morning with a brilliant idea for a new product or service. You can't wait to get started and bring your vision to life. You spend countless hours perfecting every detail, ensuring that your offering is nothing short of exceptional. Finally, the day comes to launch your business and you're filled with excitement and anticipation. But as the days turn into weeks and the weeks turn into months, you start to realize that something is wrong. Despite your best efforts, you're struggling to stand out in a crowded market. It's a frustrating feeling, and one that all too many entrepreneurs know all too well. The truth is, no matter how amazing your product or service is, it's easy to go unnoticed in a sea of competitors. But what if I told you that there was a way to break through the noise and attract the customers you want? In this video, you'll discover the unconventional marketing techniques and experimental tools that can help you stand out from your competition. Michaelovic's approach is all about generating totally atypical marketing solutions that will set you apart from the pack, no matter your budget. So, if you're ready to take your business to the next level and attract the attention you deserve, join Michaelovic on this journey of discovery. From mailing candles to giving away free ice water, the stories and insights in Get Different will inspire you to think outside the box and tap into your creativity. With Michaelovic's guidance, you can break free from the herd and make your mark on the world. Chapter 1. As a young entrepreneur, Sarah was determined to make her mark in the world of business. She had a unique product that she was sure would revolutionize the industry, but she was struggling to get noticed. Sarah tried all the usual marketing tactics, social media, email campaigns, and ads, but nothing seemed to be working. One day, Sarah attended a marketing seminar where the speaker shared a story about a man on a plane who started whooping and flailing his arms around. The man's behavior was so unexpected that everyone on the plane turned to look at him. The speaker used this story to illustrate the power of being different and unexpected in marketing. Sarah was inspired by this idea and decided to try something different to get noticed. She knew her target audience was busy professionals who didn't have a lot of free time, so she decided to create a unique experience for them. Instead of sending out another boring email campaign, Sarah organized an exclusive event at a local art gallery. The event was invitation only, and Sarah personally hand-selected each guest based on their interests and needs. When the guests arrived at the gallery, they were greeted by Sarah and a team of performers who put on a stunning show. The guests were able to network with each other, enjoy delicious food and drinks, and experience Sarah's product in a whole new way. The event was a huge success, and Sarah's business started to take off. The guests raved about the experience and couldn't wait to tell their friends and colleagues about it. Sarah realized that by being different and unexpected, she was able to get the attention of her target audience and create a memorable experience that they would never forget. From that day on, Sarah made it her mission to be different in everything she did. She used creative marketing tactics that set her apart from her competitors, and she always kept her target audience in mind. Sarah's business became a huge success, and she was able to achieve her dream of making a difference in the world of business. So, if you want to get noticed by prospects, remember Sarah's story. Don't be afraid to try something different and unexpected. By breaking the mold and standing out from the crowd, you can create a marketing campaign that will capture the attention of your target audience and help your business grow. Chapter 2. Picture this. You're a detective on the hunt for a criminal. You have a vague idea of what the person looks like, but you don't have a name or any specific identifying features. Would you be able to catch them? It's unlikely. Just like in detective work, you need to have a clear idea of who you're targeting in marketing to be successful. Building a list of target prospects is the first step to any successful marketing campaign. Without knowing who you're trying to reach, your message will be lost in the vast sea of noise. That's why it's crucial to take the time to identify your target 100. Think of it like a spy mission. You need to gather as much intelligence as possible about your targets. Who are they? What are their needs and desires? What motivates them? You need to know this information to be able to craft a message that will resonate with them. One way to get to know your target 100 is to conduct research. You can gather data through surveys, focus groups, or social media analytics. But don't stop there. 
get creative and do some old-fashioned detective work. Talk to people in your industry, attend events where your target prospects might be, and listen to what they're saying on social media. The more you know about your target prospects, the better you can tailor your marketing message to them. Remember, marketing is not a one-size-fits-all approach. By understanding your target prospects, you can create a personalized message that speaks directly to them. So, before you start experimenting with your marketing, make sure you have a clear understanding of who you're trying to reach. Just like a detective needs to know their suspect before they can catch them, you need to know your target prospects before you can attract them to your business. Chapter 3. Emma dreamed of making it big in the business world. She had a passion for creating innovative products and services, but she struggled to find success in her marketing efforts. Despite her best efforts, she couldn't seem to attract enough customers to her business. One day, while hiking in the mountains, Emma stumbled upon a massive peak that seemed to stretch up to the heavens. As she gazed up at the mountain summit, she couldn't help but wonder what it would take to climb to the top. She thought about the challenge of the climb, the risks involved, and the potential rewards waiting at the summit. Emma realized that her marketing efforts were much like climbing a mountain. She needed to have a clear goal, a strong motivation, and a solid plan to reach the summit. Without these things, she would be like a hiker without a map, wandering aimlessly in the wilderness. Emma decided that her goal would be to sell a new line of products to her customers. She knew that this would require a lot of hard work and dedication, but she was up for the challenge. She also knew that she needed to understand her customers' needs and preferences to make her marketing efforts successful. With this in mind, Emma set out to research her target market, gather feedback from her existing customers, and develop a marketing plan that would help her reach her goal. She created a list of prospects, identified her marketing mission, and kept a close eye on her competition. As Emma began to implement her marketing plan, she encountered many challenges along the way. She faced stiff competition, limited resources, and a tight budget. But she remained focused on her goal and kept pushing forward, determined to reach the summit. Finally, after months of hard work and dedication, Emma reached her marketing goal. She had successfully launched her new line of products, attracted new customers, and increased her revenue. She felt a sense of pride and accomplishment that she had never felt before. Emma learned that having a clear goal and a solid plan was the key to marketing success. She also realized that with enough motivation and determination, she could overcome any obstacle and achieve her dreams. From that day forward, Emma became known as one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the business world, and her story inspired others to follow in her footsteps. Chapter 4 Alex had recently started a handmade soap business. Alex had spent a lot of money on marketing programs that promised to bring in new customers, but none of them seemed to be working. Alex was starting to feel discouraged and was ready to give up on the business altogether. One day, Alex attended a marketing seminar where the speaker, a successful business owner named Michelle, shared a simple three-step calculation to determine how much to spend on marketing. Alex was intrigued and decided to give it a try. First, Alex made a list of the top customers who had made significant purchases from the business. Alex then calculated the average annual revenue generated from each customer and multiplied that number by the overall number of years Alex expected to be doing business with them. This gave Alex the customer lifetime value. Next, Alex researched the industry's average conversion rates to determine the close rate odds, the likelihood of landing a customer. Based on past sales data, Alex determined that there was a 1 to 4 chance of converting a prospect into a customer. Finally, using the customer lifetime value and close rate odds, Alex estimated how much to spend per customer. The final figure was lower than what Alex had previously spent on marketing, but it gave Alex a rough estimate to guide the marketing efforts. Alex decided to invest the estimated budget in targeted online advertising and social media marketing. Within a few weeks, Alex started seeing an increase in website traffic and social media engagement. The business was getting new leads, and sales started to pick up. Alex realized that by understanding the odds of success, it's possible to create a marketing strategy that's effective and affordable. 
Alex also learned that sometimes, a little investment can go a long way in achieving marketing goals. The handmade soap business flourished, and Alex became known as an expert in the industry. Alex even started sharing the three-step calculation at seminars to help other entrepreneurs struggling with their marketing efforts. Alex's business became a huge success, and it all started with a simple formula for marketing success. Chapter 5. Maxine struggling to get her new skincare line off the ground. She had created a fantastic product, but she couldn't seem to grab the attention of potential customers. Maxine knew that she needed to do something different, but she didn't know what. One day, Maxine was chatting with her friend Nina, who worked as a preschool teacher. Nina suggested that Maxine create a fun, interactive game for kids to play that would educate them about skincare. Maxine was skeptical at first, but she decided to give it a try. Maxine assembled a group of parents and children and tested her game. It was a hit. The game was simple. Children had to match different types of skincare products with the appropriate body parts. But the real genius was that each skincare product had a fun name and a catchy jingle. The kids loved it and couldn't stop singing the jingle. Maxine was thrilled with the success of the game, but she still wasn't sure how to turn it into a marketing opportunity. She turned to the advice of the author and asked herself, does this clearly present an opportunity for my target market? And the answer was a resounding yes. Parents are always looking for ways to teach their children about healthy habits, and Maxine's game was a fun and effective way to do just that. Maxine decided to offer the game as a free download on her website, and she also created a YouTube channel where she uploaded videos of kids playing the game. The response was overwhelming. Parents were sharing the game with their friends, and the videos were going viral. But Maxine didn't stop there. She also used the game as a way to promote her skincare line. She offered a discount code to parents who downloaded the game, and she included samples of her products in the game kit. Parents loved the products and started buying them in droves. Maxine's simple game had turned into a huge success. She had sustained the attention of her prospects by presenting a clear opportunity, a fun way to educate their children about skincare while also trying out her products. Maxine learned that effective marketing doesn't have to be flashy or expensive. It just needs to clearly present an opportunity for your target market. Chapter 6. Meet Jane, a small business owner who runs a cozy cafe in the heart of downtown. Her coffee is famous in the area, and people love the ambiance of her cafe. But, despite having a loyal customer base, Jane wants to attract more customers and increase her revenue. She's been brainstorming ideas for a while, but nothing seems to be working. One day, while walking down the street, Jane sees a street performer with a container in front of him. She notices that the performer's request for money is simple and specific, and she realizes the power of a clear directive. She wonders if she can use the same idea in her cafe to attract more customers. After some thought, Jane decides to offer a simple directive to her customers. She puts up a sign outside her cafe that reads, Try our signature coffee today and get a free pastry. This directive offers instant gratification to her customers with the free pastry, while also satisfying their long-term desire for a delicious cup of coffee. The next day, Jane notices a significant increase in her cafe's foot traffic. People who have never visited her cafe before are stopping by to try the signature coffee and get a free pastry. Some of them end up staying longer, enjoying the ambiance and ordering more food and drinks. Jane is thrilled to see her directive working, and she decides to expand her offerings with more promotions and discounts. As the weeks go by, Jane's cafe becomes a popular destination in the area. She even receives positive reviews on social media, and her loyal customers start bringing in their friends and family to try the signature coffee and pastries. Thanks to her clear directive, Jane's business is thriving, and she feels grateful for the power of a simple call to action. In conclusion, by offering a simple directive, Jane was able to attract more customers to her cafe and increase her revenue. Like Dorothy and Ted Husted, she realized the importance of communicating her desired marketing outcome to her customers in a clear and direct manner. If you're a business owner like Jane, consider offering a simple directive that offers instant gratification to your customers while satisfying their long-term desires. 
Who knows, it might just transform your business and attract millions of visitors like Wall Drug. Chapter 7. Maya worked for a small firm that was struggling to gain new clients. Maya had just attended a Get Different workshop, where she learned about the importance of experimenting with new marketing ideas. Inspired, she decided to try out a new approach to gain leads. Maya's idea was to offer a free online course to 10 prospects. The course was about social media marketing and it would be delivered over six weeks. Maya knew that this course would be valuable to small business owners who didn't have the time or resources to learn about social media marketing on their own. Maya reached out to 10 small business owners in her area and offered them the free course. Unfortunately, only one person signed up and he dropped out after the first week. Maya was disappointed, but she didn't give up. She decided to experiment further, just like the Get Different framework suggested. She sent out a survey to the other nine business owners to find out why they didn't sign up for the course. She discovered that they were too busy to commit to six weeks of online learning. Maya took this feedback and tweaked her approach. Instead of offering a six-week course, she decided to create a one-hour online workshop. She would cover the same material but in a condensed format that would be easier for busy business owners to fit into their schedules. Maya reached out to a new set of 10 prospects and offered the free workshop. This time, she got seven signups. Maya was thrilled. She delivered the workshop and it was a success. All seven participants were engaged and asked for more information about her firm's marketing services. Maya measured the success of her experiment by tracking the number of signups and the level of engagement from the participants. Based on this data, she decided to continue offering the one-hour workshop as a lead generation tool. Thanks to Maya's willingness to experiment and measure her results, her firm gained new clients and increased its revenue. Maya learned that failure is not the end but rather an opportunity to try something different and improve. And that's the power of the Get Different framework. Finally, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading Get Different were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.